Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. I'm going to take you on the road again, this time to monitor audio, where we shot the hyphen loudspeaker videos that we published several weeks ago. If you haven't seen the videos about that loudspeaker, watch them now, because it's an amazing forward-thinking loudspeaker concept. But while I was there, I talked at length about many things to Michael Hedges, the technical director, including loudspeaker dispersion, but not in the context of the hyphen only. We used as an example the Silver Series, their mid-price loudspeaker series, and why they use a small mid-range cone. Here's what he had to say. So Michael, this is the Silver 300. When it came in for review, I noticed it has a smaller than normal mid-range driver. What's the diameter of it? It's about three inch. Many are five, six inches, mm -hmm. but I understand it's to improve dispersion. Yes. Can you explain why a smaller driver improves the uh, dispersion? Yeah. So at the crossover point between the tweeter and the mid-range or the tweeter and the mid-base, depending on the design of the speaker, whether it's two-way or three-way, uh, the tweeter is operating in a region where it's omnidirectional. So it's effectively spreading the sound out of the loudspeaker in a very even manner. All directions. All directions to the sides and in front. However, a larger drive unit is starting to what we would call beam. And this is where the wavelength of the sound that the drive unit is producing is starting to become the same as the diameter of the comb. So bigger combs, combs tend to beam at lower frequencies. They're smaller, interfering with themselves? Interfering with themselves is a good way of putting it, yeah. And smaller cones will interfere with themselves at higher frequencies. Okay, just the wavelength. That. Higher frequencies, smaller... Smaller wavelength, yeah. Smaller, smaller wavelength as you go up. And a, and a really large driver would interfere with itself at really low frequencies. Yes, okay. yeah, absolutely. So what we're doing here is trying to curate a system where the mid-range driver satisfies its certain amount of size to, to enable to it to project the sound from the box properly, but isn't so large that it starts to beam forwards, giving you an off-axis um, bump in the frequency response when it has to match with the tweeter, which is... So when we measure out here... Direction. So when you measure at or 45 listen. degrees or listen at 45 degrees, this is going to have a much smoother um, mid-range than a speaker with a big mid-range driver. And so that's primarily the reason to go to yeah. the smaller, to make better integration between Absolutely. actually all, all the drivers, right? Between all the drivers, yeah. And it has secondary benefits. A okay. smaller cone, when we're dealing with aluminium here, also has a higher breakup. So we also give ourselves more space to do the crossover. Oh, higher breakup, like higher in frequency, higher frequency. so it operates cleaner within its Absolutely. region. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you very much. So is how a loudspeaker disperses its sound into the room important? It's super important. Months ago, I made a video about what's called the Haas effect. And in there, I explained that we don't just hear the direct sound from a loudspeaker. We hear the reflections off the surfaces in the room, the walls, the floor, the ceiling, often as one acoustical event. So how a loudspeaker disperses its sound into the room, not just on axis, but off axis, it's vital to hearing the correct sound at the listening position. So yeah, it's a big deal. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped.